Hello guys, it's MK Cedric. Welcome to Elmina Castle and Slave Dungeon. No big introduction needed. I'm with Winnie and Miss Charlie on this tour. Let's get it started. 1482. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, what do you mean by the world? Oh, it's the, the city defense. It looks like a construction defense. Well guys, this is Elmina Castle and Slave Dungeon. It was erected by the Portuguese in 1482 as Castelo de Sao Jorge da Mina, also known as Castelo da Mina or simply Mina. Damn, my Spanish language skills is through the roof right now, guys. <laughs> now let's move inside the castle, but first we have to cross the bridges that are across these trenches that you are seeing on your screen right now. They were built as part of the fortification of the castle to help fight off assault from enemies and prevent them from penetrating inside the castle. They are supposed to be filled with water actually. Guys, you want to be part of this amazing community and support my work? Please subscribe to the channel and like the videos. Thank you. We are now inside the castle on the compound. Guys, look at it. This is a mammoth of a building. And I have to admit it, this edifice is beautiful. Even though it's famous for all the wrong reasons, guys, look at it. This building has stood the test of time and it's still looking great. Before the tour starts, we have to go to the museum right in front of us, which was actually a church. Read history and stories about the castle, some facts and some objects that was used back then. Brief history. In 1481, the recently crowned king of Portugal, Joao II, decided to build a fort in order to ensure the protection of his trade, mainly gold and ivory. So King Joao sent all the materials needed for the construction in Ghana, then Gold Coast. And it was the first trading post built on the Gulf of Guinea and the oldest European building in existence south of the Sahara. The castle later became one of the most important stops on the route of the Atlantic slave trade. The fort was seized by the Dutch in 1637 before it became possession of Great Britain in 1872 along with the whole of Dutch Gold Coast. So effectively, the castle fort was built by the Portuguese, seized by the Dutch, then Great Britain took possession of the castle before he handed it over to the Gold Coast, which is now Ghana, at their independence in 1957. Nowadays, the castle is a pilgrimage for many African Americans seeking to connect with their long lost heritage. It was recognized by UNESCO as World Heritage Site in 1979.
the rooms on the ground floor of the whole structure were used as male slave dungeons, where 600 male slaves were put in the dungeons at which he shipped. Male slaves. Male slaves. 600 men were shared among the dungeons. Now, above the rooms on the down floor, above the dungeons, were residences for the missionaries, the merchants, the soldiers, and the surgeons. Now, the structure at the center there was the first Catholic church built by the Portuguese in the year 1506 in Gilcoast, where they claimed to worship God. When this structure was, when this structure was captured by the Dutch, the Dutch were Protestants, not Catholics. So they built the Protestant church in a different location, and they turned the Catholic church into auction hall, where the Dutch were buying and selling the articles. Now today, it is a museum, Victoria Museum. So at the end of the whole tour, you can also go in and see the pictures for this. So we are now going straight to the female slave courtyard where you will walk through the dungeons and see how they were treated. This, this looks better than the Cape Coast one. They have a corridor before you go to the dungeon. Together with children below 10 years were kept. So we are going to walk through the dungeons and see how many were kept in each dungeon and how were they treated. Yes, ma'am. Um, so this is one of the female slave dungeons, and about 100 women, 100 female slaves were kept in this dungeon. This is the original floor. Let's see more by getting together. What is this one? I'll talk about it. largest female slave dungeon and about 150 people together with children were kept here. The floor that we are standing on today happens to be the original floor that those who were captured or female slaves who ended up here were lying, sitting, sleeping, defecating, urinating, vomiting and menstruating. Wow. So at that time, the floor that we are standing on today happens to be human trees you blood and vomit. Now the two media doors were locked with wooden gates to prevent anyone from escaping the dungeon. So the only sense of light, the only sense of ventilation came in between the iron bars. Mm. And because of the poor ventilation to the dungeon, they decided to have another ventilation hole created. So this was created. But unfortunately, it connected to the mother where they kept the air guns and the gun power. Mm -hmm. So in case of any leakage, in case of any explosion, all the torsos drifted in, which added to the worsening condition of those who were kept here. And as a result, it increased the mortality rate. And any of them who died were taken out, or was taken out and thrown into the ocean. Sexually, they were also abused by the European soldiers the government and other government officials. We are going to see how selections were made among the women in the dungeons by the European soldiers and the government. 
we can see some risks. These are things brought by Africans in the diaspora, for instance, African Americans or British Africans who connect themselves as part of their of choosing their groups. When they come as part of the emotional aspect of the group, they end of the whole world. Phone falls into the water, no insurance. So, be careful. <laughs> so, while she is chosen, water was fed with buckets from the reservoir for her to wash down. But she did it in the same courtyard. What embarrassment of humiliation after this unfortunate experience against her own desires. She was given someone to cover up. Then she was forced to walk through the door. <laughs> then she was forced to walk through the to pass through, to walk through the staircase where she ended up in the governor's bedroom. Then she suffered rape from the governor. After the rape, she came back into the same dungeon of what she should be. So when the ship was sent below, and they were taken in into the port ship, all of them were examined by the ship surgeons to identify those who had become pregnant. And all those who became pregnant were not transported. Why? For three main reasons. Two, one, they wanted strong and energetic people who could work, excuse me. And each cannonball weighs about 25 kg. Equivalent to 55 pounds. So any female slave who resisted rape as punishment was chained to this cannonball for 24 hours. No food, no water. In the scorching sun or in the rain, she would be in it. Why? Just to put feet in the others in the dungeon. Any time you were chosen by any of the European officials or the government himself, you have no option. You have to go out and you'll go to the same kind of punishment as you saw others. Possible. That's why she was punished. In the courtyard for others and them to see what you were doing. So it is a courtyard. Female slave court. Yes. The other side is the male slave courtyard. Meaning all the male slave that you see. When you go there, I will talk about it. So those who were chained for 24 hours, what became of them then after? So you know they released to join their police. So after the end of the duration of the punishment, you can be released to go back to that. But the question is. But she still have the strength again to come up with the child. That is the question that some of us do ask. Because in the dungeons, they give them borrowed corn, melon, rice, made with oil. Very heavy. Let's have you tell others because I'm taking this time. Let's find this in the time. Now, this room is also part of the three Muslim dungeons. This is the original floor of the dungeon. And these red bricks came directly from Portugal. They were part of the materials that the Portuguese brought when they had access to the land and they were coming to put up the structure. So these are original bricks. 
from Portugal. Now, this dungeon accommodated about 120 female slaves, together with children below 10 years. Children below 10 years were seen as minors. So they had an opportunity of being, of being the same danger with the mother. But those at first 10 years who were captured were seen as teenagers, meaning they were separated by putting them in a separate dungeon. So as long as they stayed in the dungeons and with the children, these children never saw any of their parents because they had been separated for good. We can see some clothes, some chains on the floor today. These are not part of the original chains of materials. That our ancestors who were captured were good. At the time that they captured them, they, they just had animal skin or sack clothes covering their private parts. But in the year 2016, we had a program in this dungeon entitled The Return of the Slaves, where a group of Africans numbered about 60 came here to reenact the story of the dungeon. So during the reenactment, the cloth were used to cover the private part of the participant. The chains were put to themselves, like how our ancestors were captured, were dressed when they would bring them to the dungeons. And they slept in this dungeon for four hours during the reenactment. And after 12 hours of reenactment, indeed, the experience was so traumatic and horrible. Why? Mosquito bat was all over them. And the stench emanating from their urine and the vomit was even worse. So one simple question that was going wrong was, if 12 hours in this dungeon, 60 people. For 60 people. And what? this accredited 120. If, if 12 hours in this dungeon was so traumatic, then what about those who spent about one month or two months in the dungeons with worsening conditions which included feces of blood? Because they defecated, they passed the urine, they did a bit on the floor. The one could not imagine, one could not comprehend what they went through. And on top of this dungeon was a church built by the Dutch, the church, mm -hmm. where the Dutch claimed to worship God. <sighs> now these are some of the original iron bars. These are the original iron bars to prevent anyone from escaping the dungeon. These are just the ones because of the sea breeze, because of the rusting, we had them replaced. So it was really difficult for any of them to escape. And at that time, about 200 soldiers were stationed in and outside with guns. So anybody who tried to escape was also condemned to death. And you will see the condemned cell as the talk progresses. With the soldiers' blood, so what? Well, we can quiet. After the poor talk, those who want to have patience, those who want to have fun can do so. Respectfully, please. Those who survived in the dungeons, I mean the women, were taken out. They put them in chains and they walked through this door to get into the room of no return to begin their journey. Mm -hmm. So in simple terms, this is the female passage into the room of no return. Previously, we used to walk through this door. Are you ready to go through? Are you ready to go through? <laughs> Are you ready to go through? I hate that. <laughs> you hate that? Good. But today, no one is allowed to walk through this door. You can see some annual bars are placed there because the wooden staircase is no more. As a result, we are going to use the middle passage to walk through where the men passed and get to the room of no return and see the door of no return. So apart from the two cells down there that you also go there to see, all the other rooms on the ground floor were used as no slave dungeons where 600 men were here. So 400 women, 600 men. So on the average of two to three months, 1,000 were taken from here. Multiply 1,000 by 235 years, 1,000 every two to three months. In a year, we're talking about 4,000. Multiply 4,000 by 235 years. Multiply 4,000 by 190 years, that the Portuguese also used this structure for 20 human beings. We're talking about almost 2 million Africans were taken from Alamina Cafe. What about Cape Coast? What about Christian? What about the other West African states? Or countries that did not pass through here? But they were shipped directly. That it gives you an overview of how many were transported across the shores of Africa. Now, 
all the rooms above the dungeons were soldiers' residences, the missionaries, the merchants, and the surgeons. And the second floor was for the de deputy governor. The last rooms above the deputy governor were made for the governor. So the more important the person is perceived to be, the higher up, Kelly. When the ship came, the men who survived, he went through this no passage. He got into the room of no return to the gate. They are unknown just because they never knew where they were. That's what. I tell you. Now this room is called the intercession room. Why the word intercession? Both men and women had all been separated. So as long as the men stayed in the Muslim, that they never saw the woman. Because the woman lived on this side and the men lived on the other side. Let us not forget that those who were captured, some of them were from the members. And then the, the question is how were they captured? Several methods were used to capture the Africans. One, some of them were captured by force at gunpoint. But this method itself was so risky because some strong Africans resisted and fought back. So it was not healthy for them. Then, raiding and kidnapping became the second tool. Where Africans were going to their farms to harvest their farm produce, those who were going to fetch water from the riverside ended being raided at gunpoint. And this is where a whole family set up. Husband, wife, and children were raided to the farm. Because ambush had been laid, they ended up being kidnapped at gunpoint. But when they brought them here, the man ended up in the most left dungeons, and the woman ended up in the female side. And if the child, if the child is more than, is of teenage, or is a teenager, that means not necessarily will be put where the mother or the father is, but in a separate dungeon. If he happens to be in the same dungeon with the father, because he's a male, then it was a matter of coincidence. So as long as they stayed in the dungeon, they never saw each other. So when the ship came, the man who survived came from where we also came through, and the woman who survived came through this. So this was the only point that for the first time, they would have, or they would see each other, or they would meet. But it was not automatic that they would meet because they were taken in batches before they ended up in the room, in the, on the board ship. Then in the, on the board ship, they were put into separate holdings. Men holdings, then the women also slave or holdings. So many, it was really difficult for some of them to see each other. And apart from that, some of them had lost their lives. And those who died on, along the way were left behind in the hands of wild animals. Those who died in the dungeons were taken out and thrown into the ocean, and there wouldn't be any communication for you to see that maybe someone that you know is dead. Let's get to the room of the one, two, three, four. One, one by one. One by one. Yeah, this is so organized. Okay, Yeah, if I walked out, wait, so... See, see. I can't go to the door. 
I can't go through, so unless I move, unless I try to get up. Now let's go a little bit, let's go back a little bit for me to explain. Then after that, I'll give you the time to take pictures as you want. Now this room is called the room of no return. And this is the door of the gate of no return. The original door that those who were captured went through to begin the agenda. But you can see the door to be too narrow, tiny or smaller in size. So one simple question that we need to ask ourselves is, can the size of a normal human being go through this door? If no, then why this size of the door? Why is it too narrow? Three reasons accounted for this. One, to control the Africans. Two, for easy counting. So they would easily be counted to know the number that they were taking away at a particular given time. As they went through this door, one at a time. Two people cannot go through. And this means it's easier for them to count them. And three, to dehumanize the Africans. But narrowing the door into this size did not suggest that some of the Africans captured were not strong. Some of them were strong enough in their homes before they were captured by force or at gunpoint. But, sisters and brothers, just imagine someone being captured and traveled on foot for several days, weeks, and months with a little to eat to get to the dungeons. In the dungeon, the person would spend about a month or two months with worse conditions because they were given some pills to eat or hygienic food, and some of them even starved themselves, starved themselves. So by the time the ship was available, automatically they had grown lean, they shrank, they became too thin, and this made it possible for them to go through the door. At that time, the sea or the ocean was up here, was touching the structure, but the ship could not come closer because this person was too sharp. As a result, the ship docked some few meters away and they used Sazapo boat or canoes to transport them in the batches into the ship. They packed them in the holdings that they journeyed across the ocean again, though they never knew where they were. But today, where were they sent to? Some of them were sent to the Americas, that is both northern, southern, and central. Some of them were sent to Europe and some of them were sent to the Caribbean or the West Indies. There was no point but the situation became better. It always wasn't to one point. Today, as we have gathered here, if the walls have mouth to speak, they would have said a lot of things than what I am telling you. Because this is all that means. They saw how they went to work. But unfortunately, the walls do not have mouth to talk about. But this doesn't mean that we need not to know our own history. There is a popular statement that says that until the man has his own history, the hunter will always be a hero. Who is the lion in this perspective? Who is the hunter? Until Africans begin to give an account of what happened to themselves, different narratives will be given by different kinds of people. What is so painful to me personally is the fact that the time for the talk is always not enough. Whatever happened in Monday 400 can never be shared within an hour or two hours of a talk. It can never be possible. Though I am doing my best to go deep as I can, but the time is always limited. And even if I am assigned to you for 24 hours, it will never be now because they won't go out. As a result, some books are made available which I will recommend them to you. Try to get copies of these materials. Go back home, take your time to read. You would appreciate because Marcus Gabriel once said, a people without the knowledge of their own past history, origin of culture, is like a tree without truth. And the time is now whether you will be for this. So this is what's going to happen. So, if no question for me, you can take a break here whilst I wait for you to join me to proceed with our talk. Thank you. Shall we proceed? We also have a few words coming out. We give them a minute. So, what's yes? Do you know how to swim? Do you know how to swim? You don't have to say, you always, you always have to wait for the boat to come before you begin to walk to the boat. Do you understand what I'm saying? No, no, you don't understand. You don't have to swim. Now, say, if you don't have to swim, when the boat is coming, what do you have to do? If the boat is coming towards you, you don't have to swim. What do you have to do? You have to wait for the boat to come, right? So you can join the boat.
and the second question was that what is the height of this structure? I said, let's do a research. <laughs> so you were born for the day. He was asking me so many questions to the point that before you go, I said, I have two questions for you. What is the size of this court here? This is a question that I have never thought of it. <laughs> he will ask me. So it's good for that you have some kids who are towards the one. Now you can see the message here. This message was placed in 1992 during the first Pan African Historical Theater Festival. And the theme for the celebration was the reemergence of African civilization uniting Africa to the diaspora. And at the end of that paraphrase, this message was placed. And the main highlight of the message here is that may those, I mean, Africans in the diaspora who want to come back home find their root. And may humanity never again be given any chance to perpetrate such injustice against humanity. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, injustice in the world is a threat to justice all over the world. Now these are two separate cells, European cell and the condemned cell. So why do you have European cell in the slave language? Why the condemned cell? Let's enter this one first. Let's see the condition of the European cell that we compare to the condemned cell. So in this soldier who misbehaved or got drunk was brought here. Since this cell was meant for their own people, it has two ventilation holes for air to come in. This metal gate is to the original gate. It can set up ventilation holes for air to come in. How many soldiers were kept there? We have about three or five soldiers. They had access to food, they had access to water, and within the shortest possible time, they were freed or released. Let's come out and compare to the African side. Even the whole of Nigeria, the only one place 
Bandai Green, that's where they have a slaveholding center. When they go to Kenya, they have Fort Jesus in Kenya. When they go to Benin, they have one or two forts in Benin. But in Ghana, all the three major slave dungeons, okay, and about 39 forts were built and 24 lodges were built along the coast of Ghana. Because of our natural way, the, 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 the natural way of our harbor makes it really convenient for them. To, I mean, when you go to Takwadi alone, about four or five forts were built in Takwadi. Fort Sebastian, Fort Orange, Fort Bahia, uh, a lot of were built in Takwadi. So were the people brought from various countries like Yes. Syria? During the peak of slavery, the whole West Africa was divided into eight regions. We had the Bight of Benin. The Bight of Benin at that time is present day Benin, mm -hmm. present day Togo and the present day, the western side of the Niger Delta, Nigeria. Then we had the Bight of Biafra, that is present day Nigeria itself, that is the eastern side of the Niger Delta. We had Northern Gabon, we had Cameroon, all and some other countries made up of the Bight of Biafra. We had the Gold Coast, present day Ghana. We had the Windward Coast, present day Avro Coast, and the Eastern Liberia. We had the West Central, present day Angola, and the two Congos. We had the Upper Guinea, that's Guinea Bissau today, Equatorial Guinea, and Guinea itself. Then we had Senegambia, present day Senegal, Gambia, Mauritania, and finally we had, I think, uh, Southeast Africa, Kenya, Tanzania, and the likes. So that's how. So you can see those who passed through Alumina Castle were Africans from today neighboring countries, some from Nigeria, some from Togo some from Benin and some from Ghana. That is why in the state, when people try to do DNA tests, try to trace their ancestral roots, they have various percentages of their African lineage. Maybe for us, 50% Nigerian, 20% Ghanaian, or 10% from Benin or something, because of how I, how I explained that. So which of the state would you see they had a lot of people kept here? State, well, I'm not like we have Nigeria. Yeah, so you can see they are far from. Ghana, yes, yes. So you, yeah, so you can see so even when you look at the statistics, mm -hmm. Africans that were transported a lot were those from the West Central, that is Angola, Congo, and Co. They account for the great, and they didn't pass through here. They were shipped directly, mm -hmm. followed by Senegambia, then the Gold Coast. But the Gold Coast, you have some people from the bite of that Niger, present day Nigeria to go. Some of them pass here. That is why when you, when you ask a greater part of Africa who does DNA test, most of them have Nigeria in their DNA than any other African country. Nigeria. Nigeria in their DNA. That is why when Ghana launched the year of return, okay, and in 2019, and they were encouraging African Americans to do DNA test, to do DNA test, through the ancestral route, many of them we're not shifting to other African country because they saw that Ghana doesn't fall within them. Let's move. Some of the books have some other information. Over there was lifted up. So any attempt by enemies to come inside was impossible because they may end up falling to the boats and the soldiers will get them out of The four square gallons of iron in the is a compass. It also served as a sandbar. In order for them to see the time of the day, 
a long pole was put at the center and the shadow of it was used to communicate the time. The governor, he yeah, was living good life. Oh, cool. mm. Balconies upon balconies. Mm. Mm. So after the meeting at the boardroom, the governor would just get up, be here, and began to address his people. And the two structures over there are washed out. And they were bought by the Dutch. Mm. Had soldiers positioned on the watchtowers to watch over the sea to ensure that this structure is always secured from enemies who may attack from the ocean. From here, we can see Cape Coast Castle. When you look straight at the tip of the land, not this side, straight, there's something like a peninsula that is Cape Coast Castle. So, whilst the Dutch were in charge of this place, the British were in Cape Coast doing slavery, but they were enemies, so they never traded together. So, yes. But what if the governor had children? Mm -hmm. Where would the children be? So because they were raping the women, some of them became pregnant and they built stone houses in the community. And those children lived in those stone houses. And that's why when it comes to Ghana, especially at Cape Coast, Alameda and Accra, we have a lot of British, Dutch, Portuguese names, the mulattoes, because of the mulattoes. But these children were treated better and that is why they began to establish schools in the castles to give their children the opportunity to be educated and they taught them of their own language. So they grew up and they saw themselves to be superior than those of dark skin in the community. And this is where we end our tour. In summary, this structure is 540. The Montage were in charge for 155 years. The Dutch were took over and they were also in charge for 235 years. The British <laughs> were in charge for 85 years. Since March 1957, Ghana gained independence. We took over and we have been charged for 65. In 1979, UNESCO designated this structure to be a World Heritage Site. Since then, people are encouraged to connect to learn the historical value of this structure so available lessons can be learned on an individual basis and to make sure that some of these atrocities do not happen again. Thanks for your time. Hi. Is that these the original? No. Um, Frederick Minister.
Fabric. Right, guys, this is the end of this beautiful experience at the Elmina Castle. Thanks to all of you that sat through this long video and watched it. Thank you so much and thanks for the support. Guys, don't forget to subscribe and like the video, and I will see you on the next one. Cheers, MK Cedric.